finally watched Terrifier, the uh, first one. And I've heard a lot about uh, 2. I think Terrifier 2 is when this series really took off. Um, and then three's coming out, I, I think, pretty soon. So, I watched the first one. And I gotta say, I, I liked it. It's not incredible. Uh, I know the second one's like almost three hours long. That seems like way too much. But I'll eventually watch it. But this one is less than an hour and a half. I like the guy who plays Art the Clown. I think he does a really good job. And for... This movie's pretty low budget. Um, I, I don't know what the budget is. Can't be that much, but I, I have to say, I think they do a pretty good job. Wow. On Wikipedia, it says the budget's thirty-five to 55000 That's nuts. That's that's super cheap. Wow. So let's just say it's fifty-five thousand. Pretty incredible, because I actually thought the acting wasn't terrible. Um, I mean, it's not amazing. You know, this isn't uh, Leonardo DiCaprio or something. But for a horror movie, it's not bad. I like the two girls that are in it, in, in their sexy uh, Halloween costumes. And, um, like, I think they're both really good. Uh, especially the girl with the dark hair, because she's in it even more. Um, and yeah, I, I really liked it. It's got great effects. Uh, Art the Clown is brutal and twisted. I like the first third of it a lot, because it, it's kind of... It kind of slow burns it a little bit, and I was kind of surprised by that. Because you, you got these, you got Art the Clown. Well, the movie starts off with like a TV set and this girl's being interviewed about her being attacked by Art the Clown. And then that loops back at the end, but then he kicks the screen, breaks it. Then it cuts to these two girls that just got out of like a party or a bar. They're walking down the street in their, like, sexy Halloween outfits. And... And they're drunk, and one of them's like, I'm gonna drive, and the other girl's like, no, I'll drive. And then she's like, well, I'm too drunk, too, so let's go get some food. And she knows the place to go. So they go to this, this kind of seedy pizza place. But yeah, but before that, uh, she sees Art the Clown walking down the street. He's got this big garbage bag full of stuff. Like, he kind of looks like a, maybe like a homeless person, but a clown. And, um, then they go to this pizza place. And that's really where the movie kicks off. Because they're eating there. Art walks in. Sits down. And then starts staring at them and doing these creepy, uh, you know, faces. And I really like, uh... The like you could still see like the emotion on his face even though he's wearing like heavy makeup. So I liked that. Uh, apparently the director did does some of the makeup too. So he's the writer, the director, and he and he does makeup too. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's it's a pretty good horror movie. I'm kind of like, how can the how can two be in, like? almost three hours long that's like really wow it seems a bit much to me but um and then and then the rest of the movie basically takes place in this like kind of like abandoned building and there's this one guy who's a who's a uh like he kills like rats and he's spraying you know poison for them he goes outside has a cigarette the girl uh she um uh when they go back to her car her tires are slashed she thinks that the clown did it the other girl doesn't believe her the girl with the darker hair is really freaked out by art the clown i thought that was a pretty funny 
scene in the pizza place when Art uh, goes and grabs a quarter in like the little machine for kids and then he gets uh, like a little ring. He walks over to the girl with the black hair. I'm trying to find her name. I think it's Jenna Canal. So yeah, he walks over to her and then puts the ring on on her finger and is like proposing to her and she's like freaked out and the other girl's like oh that's the sweetest thing a guy's done for you all night <laughs> so the movie's got a good sense of humor and um and then the rest of the movie is pretty much in this building because this guy lets one of the girls in to go use the bathroom he then goes upstairs and is spraying and then the rest of the movie unfolds in in the basement of the building is this homeless lady named cat lady they call her cat lady toya moosh mooseni and she's like crazy and she has this uh doll that she thinks is like a real child there's a pretty funny scene later with uh, art the clown and and the doll i i thought um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely some good, um, some good effects. I like in the end of the movie, it says in memory of Wes Craven, George Romero, and Toby Hooper. Uh, there's definitely a scene that somewhat's kind of referencing Silence of the Lambs, I would say when uh he's walking around with he, he cuts off the the uh, chest of this lady that he killed and he's walking around with, with it on him um pretty brutal death for uh catherine corcoran who plays dawn Like, if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. He pretty much splits her in two. I was like, wow, that's uh, pretty brutal and, you know, good effects. It's, I think, almost all practical. Uh, I can't believe the budget was that small. But apparently it is. David Howard Thornton plays Art the Clown. I guess there's some shorts this is based on. I haven't seen them and someone else was playing Art the Clown. But yeah, this franchise is blowing up because um, there's a uh, like a convention called Creep IE Aftermath. I think this is, is what it's called. And I was watching some people's videos of them there and man, th there's this huge line for, uh, you know, signatures for people that are in the movie and for Art the Clown. So, I would think the third one does a lot of, does pretty good uh, numbers. Okay, Terrifier 3 gets released on October 11th, 2024. Uh, this says it made 340000 on the numbers. Well, I guess that's pretty good considering the budget. Which is pretty crazy but yeah it pretty much all's in that it's it's all in just one location almost it's like 80 80 90 percent of it's like in one location i like how uh jenna canal fights back a good amount she does she's not just a pushover and there's a pretty good scene with that and um i also like how she's getting the upper hand on art and she's actually beating him and then Art, Art, and then and then Art the clown just pulls a gun out and shoots her. I mean, for a slasher movie, this is pretty much a slasher movie because most of the movie he's just using like you know melee weapons. But uh, thought that was a nice twist, something you don't see often. I mean, obviously it wouldn't fit for something like Michael Myers or uh, Jason um, or something like that. It wouldn't fit, you know because there's this long history of what they do but uh i thought that was kind of funny maybe kind of a reference to uh indiana jones and the raiders of the lost ark i don't know maybe not but 
Uh, there's definitely some references to uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I'm probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, some of the music kind of reminds me of Carpenter a little bit. So, yeah, I, I was I was kind of surprised because I, I was kind of like, you know, it's a little full of yourself to make a almost three hour long horror movie. For number two, which I haven't seen yet, but the first one at least I thought was okay. And uh, I'm surprised the budget was that low. So, so David Horton, Th uh, David Howard Thornton, was the sixth person who auditioned for Art the Clown. After Mike Gianelli retired from the role in acting altogether, during the audition he came, he began miming, tasting his beheaded victim's blood, but then added salt to improve its flavor. This is what won him the role. Director Damien Leon created Art the Clown because he felt in the, in the, in the 2010s lacked an, an iconic, lacked an iconic horror clown. However, he purposely made Art as different from its Pennywise as possible. For example, Art doesn't have hair, wears all black and white, uses weapons, and doesn't speak. That's true. I mean, like many horror slasher villains, they don't speak. I mean, Michael doesn't speak. Jason doesn't. I mean, maybe Michael does in the uh, Rob Zombie movies, but usually they don't. But but this guy does a really good job with his face. And yeah, I mean, he does act like a like, like a mime. And apparently the actor that is playing him has done a lot of mime work. So. Yeah, he has previous mime experience, which he utilizes in his performance, definitely. Mike Gianelli, the original Art the Clown in the Ninth Circle, Terrifier, 2011. So there's another movie called Terrifier. All Hallows Eve, 2013. Decided not to reprise his role due to how long it would take to apply the heavy prosthetics and makeup. David Howard Thornton took his place. Director Damien Leon said of the change, Mike may as well have been a guy dressed in a, as a clown, where David is a clown. He is walking cartoon. He is Roger Rabbit in real life, and you never believe that he's Art the Clown, but he knows how to flip the switch and bring it to a dark place. The latex molds for Art the Clown was the same used by Mike Gianelli in All Hallows Eve. In order to keep the look of the character consistent between the film appearances, the mold is modified to fit David Thornton's face. David Thornton describes Art as an evil Mr. Bean. He was also inspired by other silent and physical actors such as Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Lon Chaney, Doug Jones, and Jim Carrey. I could definitely see that. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Yeah, just the... Uh, I mean, what they used to call him, Mr. Rubber Man. Definitely in his face. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, there's a reference to Wes Craven with the, with the horror store. The scene in the pizza restaurant was originally meant to take place in a burger restaurant, but Damien Leon changed when he realized that both Jenna and Catherine are, are vegetarian. David Thornton's big favorite fictional character is the Joker and hopes to for one day portray him. I would probably be good. Uh, there is a heavily edited version on YouTube which removes the graphic violence and gore as well as the meat. Well, well, what's the fun in that? I mean, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I think it's a solid horror movie. It's, it's not long at all. So, if you can check it out, I would. The ending's pretty funny, too, with the uh, scene in the morgue. 
And by the way, you can totally tell that isn't a morgue. It looks like it's just some random little tiny basement in someone's like house. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. And they're trying to say like, oh, well, they're gonna install the double doors on Monday. It's like, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so you could definitely see the budget there, but you know, whatever. It's like the last five minutes of the movie. Oh, Jenna Canal Tara performed all of her own stunts in the film. Oh, nice. But yeah, uh, that's about it. Um, I'll probably try and check out the second one, even though it's that long. I wonder if the third one's going to be that long. The third one has like a Christmas horror kind of spin to it. So I'm definitely interested because uh, I, I, I enjoyed the movie. Definitely, uh, Art the Clown is, uh, I mean, it's it's catching on, it's iconic. And uh, definitely at horror conventions, you're going to be seeing a lot of it, so. But if you can do me a favor and smash that like button, that'd be great. It really helps the channel, really appreciate it. But uh, that's about it. Uh, check out, check it out, uh, Terrifier. And I'll see you next time.